Hi guys, I am Denise. I'm Louise Rowe. I'm Tina Young. I am Promise Fun. I love the ingredients that they use. I was really excited. They approached me and everything just seemed to be perfect. So I was like, definitely let's do this. Let's create some magic. And we came out with a beautiful product. What I love about Pixie is it's incredibly inclusive. The products speak for themselves. What I love most about Pixie is their wide range of products. They have all sorts of skincare and makeup. Pixie is one of the OG brands that I've always used their makeup products in my makeup routine. And I also love that it's a luxurious brand that is very affordable. Girl, you need this palette. Beautiful versatile, just gorgeous highlighter palette that is not only for the face, but it's also for the eyes. You can use it over a liquid lip just to add a little bit of shimmer. Most women have zero time to do their makeup and this makes it so easy. Two, three, five minutes or half an hour, whatever you've got, you can do a full face with this, something really quick and be out the door. I made sure to include some natural shades for everyday looks. I hope this palette inspires everyone to be creative and to be bold, and I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us to this momentous occasion. We are doing this as the most incredible gathering for this momentous occasion. So thank you everyone for uh, joining us, my name is Amanda Bell and I'm the um, Global Director of Education and Artistry at Pixie. And I have the ultimate kind of, I suppose, love for these amazing women that I'm getting to speak to and share with you the process of the Pixie Pretties collaboration. <clears throat> so we're super excited because this is such a unique occasion. It's not only bringing these fantastic creatives who have created their unique palettes in collaboration with Pixie, but also we're doing this on a global scale. Not only do we have people joining us within the audience from all around the world, we also have multiple different time zones from our own Pixie Pretties. So thank you so much everyone for joining us and I'm so so happy that you have this opportunity to share these stories where you will hear directly from the people who co-created their palettes. Every single person has worked directly with Petra, the founder of Pixie, to create the not only, I suppose, a palette that really kind of encapsulates their vision of what their signature look is, what their perfect kind of magic wand of makeup is. But also you have these palettes which are multi-use, multi-purpose, and hold true to the ethics of Pixie. Every single palette that we're going to talk about today is vegan and packed with skin-loving ingredients. So without further ado, I am so looking forward to introducing you to our gorgeous gathering, which are the four Pixie Pretties. So thank you so much. And let me introduce you to Denise, Tina, Promise, and Louise. Thank you for joining us. And I know we're all in such different parts of the world. So if I may ask, you know, just introduce yourselves and, and where you're tuning in from. So Tina, if we could start with you, please. Hey guys, I'm Tina Young. I'm tuning in from Singapore and it is midnight. So for those of you who are up late tuning in, I thank you so much. If it's past your bedtime, you can just blame it on all the pixie pretties. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Denise, where, are, where in the world are we? Hi everyone, I am Denise and I am representing the East Coast. I'm in Jersey right now. It is 11 a.m. So it's the perfect time for me to like jump on and to give you guys all this information. And I'm so excited to be here with everyone and talk about all of the palettes. Denise has had her coffee, so she's good to go. I have that. <laughs> so I promise, my darling, where are you? 
Hey guys, um, I'm Promise and I am in LA right now. Uh, I have to wake up at like 6.30 today, which I never do, especially with the quarantine. <laughs> so I'm trying to like wake myself up, you know. So it's about 8 a.m. right now, but I'm so excited to be here with you guys and just talk about this palette with Pixie. So thank you so much, Promise. And she's had her berries, so she's full of antioxidants. <laughs> Louise, may I hold a virtual cup of tea? Where are we? Hi everyone, I'm Louise. I'm in London and it is tea time indeed. So it's perfect timing. I just need a little cake, a cup of tea. Um, but it, it's so exciting to be here with everyone and everyone who's watching. Thanks for joining. I think we've got some treats up our sleeves. We do. So I just want to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. So obviously, we're all in these different time zones and it's just incredible. This is the new normal. And I just also want to say how much I've enjoyed experimenting and playing with each one of your palettes. And I can't wait for you to share your tips and tricks and also all of the insider knowledge. And I think one of the things which really resonated with me was just how much these palettes, even if someone is just a novice or new to kind of just finding their own way with makeup to people who are searching for the ultimate pro palette, there is literally something for everyone. And I think the fact there's so many enlivening shades with these beautiful formulations and also, you know, suitable for all different skin tones. So that is absolutely amazing. I hope you don't mind, but I have prepared some questions because I wanted to be a consummate professional, which, um, you know, obviously is new to me. So um, we'd love to find out why did you choose to collaborate with Pixie for your palette? And let's start with Denise, if that's okay. Of course. Um, the reason that I decided to collaborate with Pixie, I've always loved the affordability and the range and just the quality of Pixie products. The first product that I ever used was the Silky Eye Pencil, and I was sold. I'm a sucker for or like a black coal pencil, something that just slide, glides on really nicely and smooth. And then I just started experimenting with different Pixie products. And I just love so many from makeup to skincare. There's just so many gems within the line. And that's why I chose to collaborate with you guys. Thank you. So um, Louise, why did you choose to collaborate with Pixie? Um, again, much like what Denise said, I think there are very few brands that do skincare and makeup to such a high quality um, for such an excellent price point. And as an existing customer, more through the skincare, actually, um, I have always just found their whole vibe fun, happy, enticing. It's not about making makeup um, intimidating. It's very, very inclusive and it makes you want to try new things. And I think one of Petra's biggest mantras as it were is that it, it makeup is about enhancing what you've got not hiding it and for me that's absolutely key so i'm i'm all for that message the embellishment yeah. so dina um why pixie who wouldn't say yes to pixie honestly it's not hard when this offer comes along and it's not every day and like like the other girls i've been using pixie for a long time and you know, every year you guys release the Pixie Pretties, I would receive it and I'd be like, oh, it, wouldn't it be cool if I could create my own product with Pixie? And lo and behold, a little Pixie was listening because that's, I'm true. Thank you. I um, promise, why Pixie for you? Um, Pixie for me because Pixie is definitely that OG brand. I still remember the day when I walked into Target and then I was like, oh, let me look at this, you know, green um, aesthetic brand right here. And it just has a lot of nostalgia, like walking in and seeing that for the first time. Um, and also that, you know, Pixie is a really well-established brand. And, uh, you know, I've been getting Pixie PR for such a long time and using the products for such a long time. So obviously when they reached out to me, there was you know, no thinking. I was like, yes, I'm going to work with Pixie. And this is like my first collab ever. So it's really special that I can, you know, um, work with a brand that is so special to me. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And I'd love to, if it's okay with you guys, do a deep dive about each individual palette. I want to kind of just hear from you in your own words about, you know, the, the textures. And I suppose... I, I did have a very specific question, which is 
about the shades and the textures, because we all know with makeup, it is about that kind of synergy with the color payoff, the textures, and also the performance. So I'd love to hear from you, um, for you personally, um, what the, the choice between the textures and the different kind of nuances of shades and what that kind of process was like coming up with these beautiful synergistic blends. So if I may ask Louise, because, you know, yours is the ultimate double duty kit, I suppose. Funny you say that because I lived in America for 11 years and until last year and I learned the phrase twofer. Two oh, yes. Yeah. And this is 25er because you literally get 25 colours in one that can be used on your lips and cheeks. And though it's not technically an eye palette, I use it on my eye, on my eyes and I'd love to show you guys later how I do. Um, but I am not a professional makeup artist, OK? I'm one of the few on this panel right now that isn't. But I've worked in TV a long time and done a lot of red carpets. Then there's sort of your everyday makeup. And I've got, like a lot of women three to five minutes maximum with a toddler running, running around my feet in the mornings. And so I just wanted something that would work, stay put. But back to your question about the textures, I love creamy makeup. It's, it just feels lovely on your skin. But one of the problems I used to have with, with creams was that it would fall off. You, by the time you've made it to your meeting, it's not really there anymore and you're reapplying. This stays put. But it is a cream rouge palette. I love mixing the colours. That was the whole idea. Um, if you think you've gone wrong, you can kind of fix it. So it's movable. It is meant for your fingers. But, you know, of course you can use brushes. But yes, this is my 25er. And I'm just so proud of it. Because, God, I could go on all day. I've got to let other people speak. But I think that most women have one or two colours in their makeup drawer for their lips or their cheek that they know is a winner. And when you've got those two minutes in the morning, you're like, go, done. And I get a lot of questions about my lip colour and my cheek colour on Instagram. And so I made them, basically. These are winners. Well, totally. So, Promise, you know, I'd love to hear about your shapeshifter palette. So please enlighten us. <laughs> okay, guys. So here is my shape shifter palette. So this is a contour and highlighting palette. As you guys know, I'm known on YouTube for changing my features and just turning into everyone. Um, so basically, I just wanted to create a palette that I could use to transform into anyone and that you guys could use as well. So there is two um, highlighting shades. And you guys can see there is... Um, all the contour shades as well. So basically, I just wanted to create a palette that was very inclusive of all skin tones. So there is like a taupe, um, warm neutrals, just everything there for everyone. And um, yeah, so basically, I just, um, should I show you guys how to use it yet? Or just? Should we leave, if it's okay with you, um, I would love for you to just kind of, I ha actually have one question, which is, I'm so sorry, just bringing in, I know this palette is amazing for sculpting. Um, yes. Do you ever use it on your eyes as well? Um, yes. So basically, you know, when you use a contour palette, there's always like one or two shades from every contour palette that you end up using for every day. So for me, definitely Ketmandu and this one Karma right here. These are the two that I use a lot. And the darker ones right here, I like to use them for my eyeshadows. So it's very versatile. You guys can use that. And this highlighting shade, you can use it on your inner corners, um, you know, to highlight your brow bone. This one right here. Um, yak. So you can basically do everything with this palette. So um, it's, yeah, very multi-use. Here we have another, like Louise's 25er. We have a niner that can be used in a multitude of different ways. And we're going back to a 25er with Tina. Can you tell us about your gorgeous palette? Yeah. So then, like Amanda said, there's 25 highly pigmented, silky shades. And if you haven't used Pixie Shadows, they're powder, but then they have this like almost buttery feel to it. So when you apply it, it blends like a dream. And um, my whole inspiration behind this palette is I wanted to create a palette that was versatile, that had colors that were approachable for all levels of makeup, but still have like fun pops of colors that we can play with. For example, I've got like a blue underneath here and um, it's just really versatile, perfect. It's gonna take you through all different looks, 
from morning to night um, if you want to do any like sort of um Korean beauty looks or a smoky eye this palette does it all and some of the shades they even double it up for high for highlight and brows as well but we've got a really nice neutral brown that I use all the time but yeah this is my palette tones and textures feeling fresh a 20 fiber <laughs> um Denise tell us about your gorgeous palette as well please <laughs> So this is my palette. It is called Mind Your Own Glow. And my inspiration behind this palette, I just wanted to create something that was multifunctional that you can use. Basically, I am like a glow goddess. I live for anything like shimmery. I love like shimmery shades on the lid and like a perfect like highlights here. Duck. You can use this anywhere. I even wanted to have a few shades that you can like pop on the cheek just to give you like a really youthful look and with this palette the reason why I wanted to do a highlighter palette with Pixie is because I've always been obsessed with their highlighter formula um I just think that it's this really beautiful like velvety formula it melts right on top of your makeup it doesn't sit like when you apply highlighter you don't see that like separation it just like blends right in so it's like this perfect glow and i wanted like a few different shades so that everyone can have like a shade to use and i like to mix the different textures and just this palette is supposed to be like fun and just you can apply it basically anywhere and to just give you that like perfect glow thank you so much and you know we we've kind of hit a little bit on some of the the kind of really gorgeous names that you have infused into your palette. So I'd love to find out a little bit more about the actual, you know, kind of overview name of your palette and naming the individual shades, because I know that can be so meaningful. It can go from very fun to having such a, I suppose, a profound meaning. And I know Promise, your palette in particular, has really profound names and I'd love to find out from you what the the reason was on actually naming the the, the signature shades within your palette. Um, okay, so first of all, when I was trying to think of names for my palette, you know, that was something that was um, really exciting for me because I wanted to make sure that the names weren't going to be like the basic names and shade names that I see in all of the palettes, like you know, caramel, espresso usually are the names that they give to brown shades. So I wanted to do something that was very personal to me that also reflected who I am and my identity. So um, it was actually really easy. I just had to, you know, look at things that I really loved when I was a kid and things that really made, you know, a big, um, uh, you know, kind of gives me like, <laughs> when I look back, it, you know, gives me a lot of um, good memories and stuff. So there's things of like food that I love to eat, like where I grew up, which was the city of Kipmandu. And it's funny because it's actually spelled wrong here. It was done purposely. <laughs> Some people were wondering. Um, a lot of foreigners, when they come to Nepal, um, you know, they would pronounce Kathmandu as Kathmandu. And I just thought that was really, you know, funny. So I wanted to name that. Um, so it has a lot of names that, you know, you guys have probably heard of like Karma, um, Himalayas. These are everything that represent my country. So that was really special. And I really wanted to use that for my first collab and my first palette ever. So that's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing Promise. So Tina, tell us about the the name of your palette and then those gorgeous little nuggets of Tina-isms, which is obviously the names of the colors. Yeah, definitely. So my palette tones and textures, because that's the two most important things that I look for in a palette, the tones and what sort of textures. So I definitely like that as an overall name. And then feeling fresh, I feel like that's what I aim for this year, 2021. I just want to feel fresh all year round. And with the names, I was just going for that fun feeling fun vibes, like some of the shades here, like one is snug. It's something Alfred and I say all the time. And I've, I named um, the darker color because I like how it hugs the outer corner of my eyes. So I have like kind of fun names like that because I want it to be a fun, approachable palette for everyone. Gorgeous. So Denise, illuminate us with your glow palette. Yes. Yeah, so all of my names which are like high beam golden hour they're just anything all things shine 
I mean, that's basically what my inspiration was behind the palette names, like Glazed. My absolute favorite shade and name is Sunstone. If you guys aren't familiar, Sunstone is a crystal and it just carries light. It brings you blessing and it also increases your like personal power. So I just wanted this palette just make people feel like powerful and happy and inspired and just glowy and beautiful. So that's why I named my palette Eve. So it's almost like, I suppose, the makeup representation of the good vibes from the crystals. Absolutely. And Louise, 25 shades. Where did you get the inspiration for all the colors? So I love words. I'm a big bookworm. I write for a living. And I this was one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Because I think you can't underestimate the significance of names. We just redecorated and the paint colors were drawing in by their names for the wall. And I think that giving a woman a mood and a vibe, especially after the year we've had, um, is, is really important. So my names were fun and playful, but also, you know, like Denise said, I want women to feel uplifted by them and know that, you know, today you're wearing boss or you're wearing elegance or, you know, I did LA sunset because I miss those and vacation <laughs> and just happy, happy stuff. I mean, they, they still relate to the color, but it is, it's important. I think more important than people realize. I totally agree. And I think setting the mood with a word is such an incredible way of just kind of, I suppose, bringing Louise directly into your um, makeup sitch when, you know, you've got those kind of exquisite and succinct ways of just describing those beautiful colours. So I'd love to now ask and kind of do a little bit more of a deep dive and feel free to, you know, kind of do a little swatching if the mood should take you. But I'd love to find out the colors that you would reach for to create your kind of favorite or signature look using your palette. So, Denise, please, can you show us your good vibes only glow? Of course. So today I'm literally covered in this palette. So the reason why I chose these shades, you guys can see them a little bit better. Um, and I'm also going to be posting like swatches on Instagram. So I wanted something that you can literally use all over your face. So today, um, the shade that I used in my tear duct is this one. It's high beam. It's this really beautiful like white gold. And I also use sunstone and this one right here, which is gold filled. One of my yeah. favorites. I mix those and that's what I applied for my highlight. And it just like goes on so, so beautiful. And then I took a little bit of glaze and that's what I applied it to my cheeks. It just gives you that nice flush of color. It is a rose gold highlighter, but it does have like a little bit of a pink shift. So it's really beautiful. It gives you that like flushed look. Um, and it's just like very like minimal in light. And yes. I think you know, one of the things which, which you said was that youth enhancing kind of just the gorgeous embellishment that you get from, you know, there's so many gorgeous little rosy tones in there as well. And Denise, you've knocked it out of the ballpark, may I say, it's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. So um, Tina, your colors, which shades are you gonna swatch and show us? Um. Oh, it's so hard because it's 25 and I don't wanna like, <laughs> everyone's time but I do have a video up on my YouTube with all the colors so you guys can check that out but I thought maybe I would kind of like break down today's look because it's probably one of my favorite looks I've created so far I've created many looks and every time I feel like it's always my favorite but the one that I'm wearing that day is going to be my favorite but I'll, I'll break it down um, I'm wearing these three shades in the middle we've got sassy vibrant and flawsome so they're metallic colors I'll just watch them there Ooh. wow I see, see, I'm, I'm even impressed is it the light yeah. <laughs> um, and then I've got on seaside which is that blue that I was showing you guys before underneath what was the because I mean I don't know if you guys can all pick up but obviously Tina's accent is originally Australian was that kind of inspired a little bit by you know a coastal little situation in Australia I was missing home and I was in need of a holiday so yeah. that explains maybe that explains today's look and Lovely. you can see I've got like those 
four colors on. And this is what I do because when you have a palette that has so many colors, sometimes you're like, oh, where do I start? And I always like to swatch it and create a little like palette on the back of my hand just to kind of like double check. Do I like how the colors are looking? Do I like the combination together? So that's a really good tip I have for you guys. If you want to try a new look and you don't want to commit it to your eye just yet, swatch it on your hand and just stripe it down next to each other like this. And then if you're feeling it, you can go for it. I love that. So, Louisa, I know you're someone who um, isn't just experimental, you you know, with certain kind of little pops of colour, because you're no stranger to the red carpet. So what would be a kind of a knock-it-out-the-ballpark kind of red carpet situation with your palette? Um, and so what would be a signature kind of like mom running around? Okay. You know, three minute makeup fit. Um, this is no filter. And what I love about you, kind of like what Tina was saying, you might think, oh, that's really, really bright. But actually, let me show you, you hardly need any. So I'm not really digging my finger in very hard. It's just a little bit on there. Yeah. And actually, I put this on my cheeks yesterday and I've got all my um, tutorials are on a reel on my highlights on my Instagram. So if you guys want to go back and check names, because I know I can do it quickly and you can kind of forget the name. But that is a little pop of color that you can build up. You can line it, then you can put a clear gloss. Probably for red carpet, I would put a gloss over that. Um, but you can see it's subtle. But yeah. A really nice pop of color and then for sort of every day my absolute favorite color in the whole palette is smooch this one here and i tend to add a bit of putty this is for cheeks i love these two which i've got on now um but that's a very apricotty i think quite youthful i swear i kind of knock about five years off well i, <laughs> I like to think when i do this <laughs> this color but you see just a tiny 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 bit and then I, I always look crazy because I hold the smile to get the apples of my cheeks <laughs> and then you're like hi I'm just gonna <laughs> like this for a minute um but a little bit of putty on top is lovely and then I won't do it now but I have got on my eyes glow which is Ooh. a lovely color again great on cheeks but really yeah. great on eyes and again that's on my highlights reel if you want to see how I've used that um on my eyes as well so it's like the whole face done Bye. That's amazing and effortless. So promise, what would be your deep dive into creating one of your shape-shifting looks? Um, okay, so here's the palette again. I think I'm going to do a quick little demo because I actually didn't contour my cheekbones today because I wanted to show okay. you guys how oh. I do it if we have some time. So I like to start off with Kathmandu first. And, you know, these um, uh, the powders are very rich and very pigmented. So I just like to pick a little bit of Kathmandu first. So I'm just gonna take my angle brush and I've been like doing this thing cause it's like super easy. So I just kind of like align where I want the contour. And sometimes I do a little like rounded contour if I want that Mariah Carey cheekbones. And if I want that super angled, you know, um, let's say like Angelina Jolie kind of look, then I like to just go straight down. So we're just gonna do that. I'm going to take Kathmandu just off a little bit and I'm just going to place my <laughs> brush. Okay, this is probably the earliest I've done my makeup, so. <laughs> okay, so we feel honored, promise. Honored. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and. I love the fact that, you know, kind of you're showcasing the versatility, not just the, um, the way that you can kind of, I suppose, choose how sleek and how shadowed you want your cheekbones to emulate whether you want that kind of I suppose that a little bit more softer sculpt like Mariah and then yeah. something that's a little more angular like Angelina I love it yeah I think that's the thing that I learned about doing contour like there is no way to do a right way of contour because obviously you know if you have a rounded face and you want to make it look more slimmer like you have to do certain different steps than how a person with a square face would do their thing. So there's like slight little differences and, you know, everybody shouldn't contour the same. So there's a lot of tricks and tips kind of thinking about how you want to um, kind of work with the illusion of makeup. So, um, yeah, so this is like basically how I think a lot of people would do it. So I'm just going to 
contour my cheekbones. And I think you guys can, let me look at my mirror because I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, well, you look so lovely. Kind of like a slight contour, so you guys can kind of a hundred percent difference. Yeah, and then I, I just do like a little three from the forehead down and then down here to my jawline. So that's well, how I usually work with with the contour for every day. And if you were going to add a little bit of a color just on your lid, which would be the color? Say, for example, you you know, like you've done, you've got some nuanced color on your um, eyes. What would be the color that you would just add for a little sizzle on your lid right now? Um, okay, so on my lid right now, I definitely use um, spice, just to spice up the eye makeup. So it's this one right here, this shade right here. Um, so yeah, usually, you know, I feel like, this light brown, like this dark brown is what I use every day for my everyday look. So I don't know if you guys want me to show you guys how I do it. I mean, I do have some eyeshadows, but I can kind of show you guys how I apply it to the outer corners of my eyes. Um, so I'm going to pick up a little like, spot. Little You're going to spike that up. And yeah, so just it's really pigmented. So I'm just going to darken this little area right here, which is actually an eyeshadow. So let me just go ahead and contour that looks absolutely amazing and it's just kind of given that little bit of extra kind of shape shifting element to your eyes yeah. where you kind of made them so much more kind of like kittenish and i am here for a kid <laughs> always yes. thank you promise that's amazing and I, I think one of the things which is so inspiring, you know, kind of hearing directly from you all on how you're using your palettes and, and what that means to you. But I'd also, if I may, ask, are there any little secret kind of almost pro tips? And I know, Louise, you've already said that you use some of the colors on your lids. Um, but when you're blending, okay, let me put this to you. Do you blend layer upon layer or do you use the back of your hand as as a palette what is your blending top tip for your palette louise um hands and i obviously very clean hands um but i have always liked to apply makeup even concealer with yeah. my face. yes i've got loads of brushes yes i use them funny enough more for foundation than anything else um, but for me, like when I was doing my eyes yesterday and I did use a darker color in the crease, I actually found because mine's a cream, a cream rouge palette, um, the blending with fingers was, I just like the effect it gives. Um, I know you're going to ask us later about beauty inspiration, but for me, it's like basically every French woman that ever lived. And I think that they have this utterly carefree ability for their makeup to look just kind of sexy and, and, and natural and if there's a bit of shine on your forehead great it works and and I think you can kind of get that effect better when you're blending with fingers. Gorgeous so Tina do you I have a question do you ever use your eyeshadows with a damp brush or do you tend to just stick with more of a, a dry brush? And what would be your top tips and pro tips with application techniques for the eyeshadows? I definitely mix and match. I think for a day, look, if I'm just doing a soft eye. I'll just use it just dry. But then if I want to amplify any of the colors, like maybe this like melon shade here it's a really nice kind of like icy mint color i'll wet my brush and i'll use it in the inner corner of my eyes so it's really versatile and i like to use my fingers for the metallic colors so then there's no fallout you can really pat it on um also like in terms of like some of the brighter colors i feel like when I was teaching makeup years ago, people would be or like feel really intimidated, like they didn't know how to use it. And I always say, like, you know, you can just choose an accent color like I did today, pop it underneath or maybe just in the inner corner. Start off like baby steps. You don't have to do like whole wash or blue everywhere. Um, but that's like a fun tip that I have. Um, what else? Um, there's lots of um, mattes as well. And I actually have on this shade, which is called Buttercup. I have putty from Louise's palette um, underneath and I kind of set it and use that as a blush. So, you know, you can kind of mix and match. I, I love just using my powders, even on my lips as 
to kind of like mattify my lip and kind of cheat a little bit and draw in that extended cupid's bow, like some sort of um, this shade, soft fade is really good just to create like that shadow. So yeah, that's some of my tips. Gorgeous. Um, talk about multi-use. So with Denise, do you ever mix? I mean, I know you use some of the, the shades actually on the cheeks. Do you ever layer? And what would be your preference for layering with your palette? I do layer. So I do have a few tips with the palette as well. And I wanted to show you guys just like quickly some swatches so you can see them. I have them on my hand. And they're like molten metal. Yes, they are so beautiful. Stunning. And with this palette, one of my favorite tips that I like to do. So the first thing when applying these, I like to make sure that I always spray my face. So I'll use something like the makeup mist. And you just want like after you powder your face down, you apply like a few spritz of the spray and then you go in with the highlighter and it will just like amplify that. And that's what makes it like really melt in really nicely with your bronzer or your blush or whatever you have going on. And you can also like if you don't like like that wet skin look using just a brush, applying like a few spritz of that and then going directly into the pan. And this just makes, and, and this is what I like to, you can use this when you're going over your lid. I don't know if you guys can see that. And it just like really makes it intense and it makes the um, shadows really pop and look really like stunning. And I also like to go in with my finger. So like you can use this palette like over with your fingers. You can can use them with a brush. If I'm going in on my highlight area, just using it with like a domed flush, fluffy brush is probably my absolute favorite way to use it. And for my cheeks, it looks really beautiful if you apply like a matte blush and then just take a tiny bit of either these, these are the two shades that look really beautiful on the cheeks. Just taking like a little bit and applying it over top, it just gives you that like perfect like glow with a little bit of pink shade. Like the ultimate cheek topper. So yes. from, um, what would be your little kind of tips and tricks for using, you know, maybe a transformative element? Do you ever mix with maybe a mist or, you know, what's your top tips? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like a mist is probably like the easiest for like everyone. Just literally something really light. You don't need any because there are like other products that are a little bit heavier. But I just feel like with this palette, it gets activated with any. You can even use water on a brush. Like if you don't have like a setting spray or a mist, just wetting your brush and making it nice and damp going in with, with that or even using your finger, like wetting your finger a bit and then going right onto your highlighted areas, your cupid bow, right into your tear duct, basically anywhere you want to glow. Gorgeous little tips and tricks about embellishments. Thank you so much, Denise. So right. prom, what would your kind of top pro tip be to share with everyone to transform the use of their palette? Okay, so I think, first of all, you know, I love experimenting. And um, so, yeah, I would want you guys to just experiment. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by this palette. Um, this palette is really great for beginners to pro. So basically, my little tip, uh, my favorite combinations, let's just say that, to contour. Um, right now, where I would just suggest people would be Kathmandu and Spice. So these are the two shades right here. They are a little cooler tone shades. So I like to do a combination of that for a little deeper, like darker transformation. Sometimes like... When I do celebrity transformations, my features are not exactly like a celebrity. Like when I look at, um, let's say if I wanted to transform into Adele, um, I would kind of, you know, take some time to look at her features in mine and kind of see what the similarities are. If there isn't much of a similarity, you know, you're going to really have to sculpt and to like highly define some of the features. So you wanna use darker um, combinations of contour for that. And for that, I would use Kathmandu and Spice. So I would just suggest like maybe nighttime, you could use that if you want a darker contour. And then um, Karma and Namaste right here, these two go really great as well. So I like to do the combination of these two 
for, um, you know, certain other looks as well. So I think, um, yeah, I think it's mostly about combinations for me and just doing little tips and tricks to like change the shape of your face, nose, and then just always going on top with um, Yak and Momo, which is like my favorite shade right here. Super reflective. Um, I love shine, glitter and all that. So I have to have these reflecting highlighting shades and they really make the palette look really nice. So yeah, I think that is... Um, so much from this. You know, I have to say, and some amazing questions have come through, but I don't know where the time's gone. You know, we're kind of, if it's okay with everyone, there's an amazing um, question that's come through from Stephanie. Um, and I just wanted to say um, thank you, first of all, before we even deep dive into the question, because I know you're all going to have some amazing um, little tips and tricks for Stephanie. I just want to say it has been such an honor and privilege hearing directly from you. So for myself, as a mature woman, and also for Stephanie, her question was, do any of you beautiful ladies have some tips and tricks for mature skin? Yes. I know. Yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, I was going to say one of my biggest makeup tips is is actually just purely about skincare, because the difference of your makeup and how it looks and how it stays all day when you have exfoliated and really hydrated. And for me, that's a really great serum that might have hyaluronic acid followed by a fantastic moisturizer. Um, and I think also not going to matte because not only can it perhaps highlight creases and, and wrinkles whatever uh more and you sort of you hear the sort of newsreader look you know too much powder too much powder you, you know less is more but I think when you have exfoliated your skin and it feels like a baby's bum totally smooth that for me is a game changer for how your makeup then looks youthful afterwards I, I think you know to be honest you're you're absolutely spot on the hydration and the texture of the skin and I think one of the things which may surprise Stephanie is you know because she maybe hasn't experimented with each one of your palettes yet is the texture and I think that is so important obviously having these velvety especially Louise your palette has such amazing velvety you know, kind of textured formulas that just melt with ease with the skin, you know, the kind of the warmth of the skin all with a brush. And also the, the way that Petra has worked directly with you all to create something that blends so seamlessly. Um, is there a color? Okay, let's make this maybe more specific just to help, to help Stephanie. Um, what would be your top pick color or color combination from your palette imagine you've got your mum or you know kind of an auntie sat in front of you and you're going to show them you know a transformative little top pick from your palette what would that be so tina if i may ask you first that would be amazing thank you i definitely would recommend smack bang in the center here vibin this shade that I swatched earlier I feel like it looks amazing on all types of skin tones and because it's a metallic you can you just do a wash of this and it's very three-dimensional you don't have to go in with like two three four colors you don't have to do anything too crazy a wash of this when the light hits it from different angles it's actually going to shape and define your eyes gorgeous so Denise what would be your top pick from your palette for you know, kind of that person where you're like, you've got it going on, let me show you. Just really quick um, about mature skin. I just wanted to piggyback. Hydration is probably the absolute biggest tip is just making sure your skin is really like nice and moist. And when you apply powder, just a tiny bit of powder. You don't want to use a really dense brush. You want to use something really fluffy just to give you just like a little bit of wash of powder. And with this, it's the same thing. You just want to go in, you can use basically any shade, um, whatever your heart is calling you to, but you just want to go in with a light hand. I feel like with these, 
they're just very like pearlized, very like velvet. So they aren't going to come off powdery or chunky or sit on top of the skin. So I think that these are amazing for all skin tones and all different skin types and ages as well. So I feel like it's just kind of playing around with it and seeing what your personal preference is and what you like. Thank you so much. Um, Promise, what would be your top pick if you had to choose one shade from your palette for someone of a more mature age? Um, I think definitely like the most softest contour shade, you know, just so it's not too harsh. So I would definitely recommend Kathmandu over here. And um, yeah, I think this would probably be the best one to work with. And then obviously you can also use all the other shades for the eye makeup, which I feel like is one of the things that I love with mature skin is kind of contouring the eyelids and kind of giving eyes um, better shape and stuff. So I would definitely use like the lighter shades on the eyes and then on the cheekbones, maybe like lightly on the jawline. So something soft softer and uh, yeah a light light handed <laughs> like a little veil of color and I've actually brought two things because you know you Louise you are so right hydration and gentle exfoliation so obviously glow tonic and um, the hydrating milky mist are such kind of crowd pleasers for kind of really getting the the maximum glow and hydration to the skin um, so say for example um, with your palette, Louise, if we prep the skin, we've got that hydration, we've got that beautiful texture. What would be your top pick or top picks color wise from your palette? Um, right. And, and just quickly on that hydration, the vitamin C sheet mask from Pixie oh. is outrageous. Okay. Um, and that if the longer you can leave it on, I'll watch a whole movie in it. So that's probably my top tip for hydration the night before you will really feel the re rewards in the morning. But this color here, it's called softly and it's a really rich, but not overpowering rosy pink that is oh, on lip and cheek. And, you know, I would use more on the lip, less on the cheek, build it up. Um, but I just think that is a very warm tone that suits any season because I think we all switch it a bit from winter to summer and also hopefully every complexion that was a huge part of in creating this and I think we all agree you know with all our palettes that we want it to be really suitable for all complexions and ages. Totally thank you so much everyone I'm so thankful that you spent this time and the time has gone so quickly I just feel like it's literally been like a little cozy fireside chat with each one of you and we've got to find out your inspiration what the process was for naming your products which as we all know is such a, a, a fun and meaningful and profound part of the whole process I would just sincerely like to say it's been an absolute honor spending this time virtually with you. Um, obviously, please, everyone, do watch the content that these amazing, creative, absolute forces of nature are just, I suppose, sharing um, tips, tricks, swatches, and how you're using the palettes individually as well. So, um, there will be links to everyone's social so that you can, you know, go straight away and find out for yourselves a little bit of, I suppose, inspo directly from the source. Um, it's been such an honor and thank you so much for creating these wonderful palettes that are so unique and so synonymous with each and every single person that just... I suppose, resonate on such a profound level with each one of you for, you know, kind of the way that you want to embellish and give people the ability to create their own looks. So thank you very much. And it's been such an honor. And Tina, sleep well tonight. Louise, give your daughter a really big kiss from us at Pixie. Uh, Denise, have another coffee and just enjoy the rest of your day. I promise we thank you for getting up early and spending this time with us. Thank you so much, everyone. And it's been such an honor. Take care and bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you bye. so much.